Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be repairing this Motorola Edge 5G. The edges haven't held up so well for this Motorola with all four corners cracked on what is the most curved screen I've seen. While curving the display to a 90 degree angle provides an immersive experience, it definitely doesn't provide a durable one. This phone was purchased in its current condition from eBay for 138 Australian dollars. Despite the display lighting up, it has several black spots and no longer responds to touch input. One thing I've never seen is a boot screen quite like this one. It looks great, a weird observation, but every other Android phone I've ever seen is just black with a logo. As we obviously can't use the phone in this condition and the screen is only getting worse, I think it's time we fixed it up. But to do that, we're going to need some quality tools. I'll be using my trusty iFixer ProTech toolkit that I've been using for years. Thanks to iFixit sponsoring this video, you can also get 30% off all batteries in the Australian store for the month of April using the code SPICYPILLOW at checkout. Visit iFixit.com slash Jeffries or the link below. I'll start by placing the phone on a heat plate for a few minutes to soften the adhesive holding the back panel in place. The back can then be pried up using a suction cup and plastic pick. Once I began, I noticed the back of the phone is actually just plastic which is great for durability and means there is little chance that we'll damage it while prying it free. I'll need to continue working the pick around the perimeter of the phone to slice through all the adhesive. Once complete, the back can be lifted up and away from the midframe. Although you need to take care around the LED flash to ensure its flex cable is detached from the back panel before fully removing it. Next, a series of torque screws securing the NFC antenna can be unfastened using my iFixit screwdriver. Prying out the antenna with a spudger reveals the internals to the Moto Edge. I'll need to disconnect the battery before proceeding to both shut down the phone and prevent damage to the motherboard while we're working. While we won't be removing the motherboard for this repair, we can still admire its engineering. Unlike many of its competitors, it still has two physical SIM slots, one of which can be used for an SD card, but it also still has a headphone jack. But all of this is meaningless if we can't even use it. And that's where our new display comes in. Before we install it, I want to test out the phone to make sure the touch issue is due to the old display's damage and not anything deeper. Test fitting the new display will also allow us to test that display before gluing it onto the frame. We don't want to go through all this effort to find out that the screen is faulty. Thankfully this one is fully functional. After detaching the display, I can proceed to removing the battery, which isn't as easy as I'd like it to be. I'll need to reheat the phone, this time from the front, allowing the heat to travel to the battery adhesive. But still, this battery didn't want to budge. To aid its removal, I added some isopropyl alcohol around the edges. This was effective, and now the battery could come free. Below it is the display cable, which we needed to access in order to replace the display. I'll loosely attach the NFC antenna, which will help protect the internals of the phone while we pry out the display. And that's no easy task. As I'll be replacing the display alone without it being attached to a new frame, I'll have to pry the old one off. After the phone's been heated for a third time, I can begin separating the display. Motorola has used no adhesive around the left or right edges, but rather about 5mm in where the display sits flat. This means you'll have to get your prying tools around the 90 degree curve to even reach the adhesive, but using some alcohol helps aid this process. Given the strong adhesive under the midsection of the display, it will likely separate when you try and lift it out, similar to some of the Google Pixel models. Underneath is the fingerprint reader and proximity sensor up top. Before the new display is attached, the mound of adhesive will need to be removed and replaced to ensure the new panel sits flush and stays in place. While I would recommend using the correct pre-cut adhesive for any repair, if you couldn't source it like myself, you'll have to resort to an alternative method. I'll just cut and apply the adhesive from a roll in a similar pattern to how it was originally. However, using the correct adhesive will help ensure water resistance, but as this phone is only advertised as a splash resistant device, I think this will be sufficient.
Now is the opportunity to clean the buttons. These are mostly hidden when the screen is installed, which will make them hard to clean later on. Proceeding, all the plastic film can be removed from the newly installed adhesive before I go ahead and apply a small bead of liquid adhesive around the edges. This is just to help the display stay attached to the top and bottom of the frame. Turning our attention to the new display panel, all of its protective film can be removed before we attach it to the frame. Now comes the most critical step, aligning the new screen into the frame. You only get one shot at it before the adhesive will lock it into place, so make sure you've got everything right before pressing it down. Once secure, I'll keep pressure on it using rubber bands until the liquid adhesive has dried. Once it has, we can come back and remove the rubber bands and continue reassembling the phone. After reattaching and routing the display's cable, the battery will go in next. I won't apply any new glue as what's already there is more than sufficient to hold it down. After the charging port is reconnected, the battery can be plugged in. Flipping the phone over, we can see if all that hard work has paid off. And it certainly has. That display is looking fabulous. The phone is really coming together but there's still a little more to do. I'll clean off the internals and cameras to remove any dust before attaching the NFC antenna and its 12 Torx screws. Even though this phone could support wireless charging, it's absent from the phone. Personally, given how inefficient it is, it's not really a great feature anyway, especially if you want to charge your phone fast and without wasting energy. The last thing we need to do to finish off this repair is install the back panel. To do that, it'll be a similar process to the front display panel. I'll start by removing all of the old adhesive and cleaning up around the cameras. I'll need to repeat that process for the panel itself. One downside to the plastic back is that Motorola has chosen a glossy finish, which is more prone to scuffing and scratches. But still, I'd prefer that over a glass panel, which is easily smashed and could result in cutting my fingers on that broken glass. Proceeding, the new adhesive can be applied. I'll use a similar method to that of attaching the display. Some additional liquid adhesive can be applied to the corners where there are gaps in the adhesive. This is to prevent any dust from entering. With that, the back panel can finally be reattached to the Motorola Edge 5G. After aligned, it can be pressed firmly into position. Now, all that's left to do is clean off any residual glue that has seeped out the sides of the display, as well as clean out the ports before we remove the plastic protective film from our new display panel. And we're done. So this is it, the Motorola Edge 5G. For a phone that's about 50% glass, that display replacement process was quite involved. Ideally, you would replace the display alongside the frame, skipping out on having to unstick the old screen. But if you can't find the whole assembly, you'll be stuck replacing the display only, as I did here. After the repair, the phone is once again back in a fully functional state. As good looking as that display is, I definitely carry this phone in a case to protect the glass edges. After all, you wouldn't want to do this repair twice. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.